Hello everyone, my name is Alan Becker and welcome to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Um, I'm doing these tutorials because I get lots of emails from people that want to learn how I do Flash or how to make animations and uh, this is my response to that. I really want people to learn because there's not enough tutorials out there. Um, so this is Adobe Flash CS5. There are many other versions out there, but they're pretty much all very similar. Yeah, this is uh, my character that is going to guide us through the tutorials. Um, say hi. Hi. His name's Red. Um, yeah. Uh, here is the stage. These are the different parts of uh, the Flash interface. You see the stage here. The timeline is down here where all most of the animation goes on. And over here you see all the tools on the side which you will be using. Um, Flash is a vector based program, meaning it's not pixel based. If you've worked with Photoshop or Paint, which I have right here, you'll see that a, um, a circle that looks fine zoomed out will look very jaggedy once you zoom in. It's not the same for uh, vector-based things, so when you zoom in, it just keeps on getting smoother and smoother, no matter how, how far you zoom in. So that's the difference between pixel and vector-based. Uh, let's see. So, go back to 100% here. The toolbar has a ton of tools, and most of them you don't need to know about. Um, I'll just go over the ones that you do need to know about, which is first the selection tool, which you hit by pressing the V key, and which allows you to select pieces of your smiley face. And if you want to select everything, you double click it, or you can, yeah, click and drag over it, and you deselect by clicking away from it. You can select text too, whatever, whatever you want. Um, Let's see, you don't need to know about that stuff, but the text tool, you, you know what, how it works probably, is how you type stuff onto your screen, and then you can move it around with the selection tool, which we just covered. Um, let me change the line color to black. Uh, this is the line tool, which you get by pressing N, and you can create lines. Here is the rectangle tool, which you use to create rectangles, and you can also make ovals and other stuff. Uh, you press O to get to that. So we have two different colors that we can control, basically the stroke color and the fill color. Uh, the stroke color and the fill color are independent of each other. If you, if you change the, if you select them both and change the stroke color, it only affects the stroke color change the fill color, it only affects the fill color, stuff like that. And um, the pencil tool and the brush tool, you would think that they're the same thing, but the pencil tool basically draws strokes while the um, brush tool draws fills. Even if you go down to the smallest brush and it looks like a pencil, but it's actually a fill. If you zoom up close, you see you can alter the width the width width of the fill while with the stroke you can only change the line see makes sense uh... with the paint bucket tool you can fill in anything that's a fill if you switch it to the ink bottle tool you can fill in any stroke to whatever color you want. It's very handy. You can also outline stuff by just clicking on it like that. Uh, the eyedropper tool will allow you to pick colors and then paste them on to other things. You can also use the eyedropper tool to pick strokes and then yeah, add that stroke color to stuff. Um, the eraser tool is used to erase stuff. It doesn't erase text, apparently. And uh, the hand tool and the zoom tool, I never click on these, but I use sh keyboard shortcuts. Um, hold down the space bar 
to use the hand tool, which basically draw drags your canvas around so you can navigate easily. Also, the zoom tool, I hold down Control and press plus or minus on the keyboard. Control plus, Control minus. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. This is the timeline, and these are our frames. See, I have two frames right here. Actually, they're keyframes. There's a big difference between frames and keyframes. Um, here we have 10 frames and then two keyframes. You cannot um, alter individual frames independently of each other unless there are keyframes, if that makes sense. So if I wanted to make a, a new picture of this guy, then I would press F6, and that creates a new keyframe, and then I would uh, change him a little bit, and then he changes, see? Um, you press F5 to add frames, which is basically just uh, empty placeholders, or if you want to extend a keyframe, yeah. Let's see, also F7 is used to create empty keyframes, so you can start fresh, stuff like that. Also if you um, select multiple stuff, you can make multiple keyframes, stuff like that. Um, these are the layers. You can make as many layers as you want, and whatever is on top will be on top. See? And then if you drag it underneath, it'll be underneath. And uh, you can hide or show layers using these. This I show or hide all layers. You can lock them using this, meaning you can't edit them. That's very handy if you have stuff that's overlapping and stuff. You only want to work on one of them, then see, I'm only selecting this one. Also, uh, this color thing is used to isolate layers into like outlines based on this little color. You can change if you want, which I won't. And, uh, yeah, well, like I did before, I make a new layer by pressing this. You can delete layers with this, like so. And uh, this thing down here um, is called onion skinning. It is very crucial for animation. Um, if I click on it, you can see that you see a ghost image of the previous and next frames. And that's good if you want, if you're doing frame by frame animation. You want to align your previous one with the next one. So you can also change how many frames are viewed before and after. These are also pretty much the same. You'll you'll get it. Uh, change the frame rate here. Changes the speed. If it's only four frames, if I press Enter to play. And it goes very slowly as opposed to 29 frames, it goes very fast. And I'll change it back to 24 because that's what I always use. Not really. And um, this is the library. The library is very important. Um, you use it to hold all your symbols and your sounds and pictures and stuff. Symbols are uh, very hard to explain, but um, they're placeholders for different. Um, objects. So when you press F8 on the keyboard, you can create a symbol. Whatever you're selected, whatever you've selected will become your symbol. And you give it a name, make it either graphic, movie clip, or button, and OK. So now that I have this um, symbol that I called red, I can create multiple instances of it on my stage. And the handy thing about this is if I want to change one of them or all of them, then I can just edit it and then it'll change everything or all of them. That's very handy, very handy. But I'll change it back right now because his name is red and he's not blue. Um, all right, so I think that's about it. Um, if you have questions, contact me through my website. 
and I will be making more and more tutorials showing you the tips and tricks that I use to make my animations. So uh, subscribe to my videos, that would be nice I guess. And uh, stay tuned for more. Yes, that's about it. Um, Red would like to say goodbye. Bye bye! Please subscribe! Thank you Red. I will see you guys later.